Welcome to the Adam Rothstein Hockey Podcast. This is the podcast where we talk all things hockey, interview players, and help new ones learn the game. If you want to learn something new about hockey, this is your show. Get ready. You're listening to the Adam Rothstein Hockey Podcast. Welcome in to episode 14. I'm your host, Adam Rothstein. So today I'm going to be talking about concussions, player safety, and uh, I may get into some fighting. So over the course of the years, um, hockey rings have you know, not really evolved. The only exception has been the curved glass uh, towards the benches and towards that one box, um, or depending on where the penalty boxes are um, on the rink, that just makes the uh, difference. I think, um, yeah, and, and even with the penalty boxes, um, depending on, or that one box um, where the uh, where the commentator goes down or the uh, analyst goes down into like Pierre Maguire used to, um, that has also had curved glass um, because believe me, you take a bad check from there and oh my God, that that hurts. Like, like there were some incidents in the high school hockey. Now, I'm not even talking about college. I'm talking about high school hockey where that, you know, it's a sharp edge too even though you're wearing a helmet, and even though it's about an inch, maybe an inch and a half thick, about an inch and a half, to, uh, it could be two depending on how the metal is crafted. But if you take a hit like that going uh, 12 miles or even, or like 14, 15, 16 miles an hour, and your head goes the wrong way when you're trying to, you know, brace the check, uh, geez, your head, like, like that's a concussion right there. Um, you know, nine times, yeah, ninety nine percent of the time you're going to get a concussion. Um, also, um, the reason why I am bringing this up today is the Tua Tonga de Valoa. Um, geez, I I totally forgot how to pronounce Tiger Valoda, Tiger Valoda, whatever. You you know what? Yeah, just yeah, just. Criticize me in the comments on YouTube later um, on that. So there's there there was that incident. There was the Indonesian soccer game. 179 people died. 179 people died. So supposedly there was only 129, but I read reports of it being up to 179. There were about over a, easily over a thousand people that got injured from that, and and it made no sense. For a soccer game, a soccer game, okay, like, we like our sports here in North America, okay, whether you're in Canada, U.S., or even Mexico, Mexico has their professional leagues, uh, whatever that may be, um, wh- whatever it may be, you know, it it's not just, it, it's not worth it. I mean, we've had like really big fights between the Red Sox and the and the Yankees over the years, but I've never like like with with a few exceptions, um, we we haven't had anything this bad. There were, even was a um issue in with at Comiskey Park back in the eighties where where they literally um got in for like a dime and like. And, uh, and there was, um, a, and they were just blowing up records, but it got rowdy. There were people doing drugs and there, and, and there were some injuries too, but it wasn't serious death. Um, and, and that's probably the worst of it. Um, in the 1970s, uh, there was definitely, there was a playoff game between the Rangers and the Bruins and, and whoever, and I think it might have been Phil Esposito. Uh, I honestly forgot this incident, but but you know, a fan had his shoe stolen. A fan had his shoe stolen from him, and it and that um certainly 
you know, from one of the players too. And, you know, and, and someone, I, maybe it might've been Esposito or, or, but, but he, you know, struck the fan with his loafer and he waddled home with one loafer. Uh, so it's, so it's not worth fighting for one thing. Now, um, I've definitely been trying to find, um, things of how to do this without, um, you know, you know, trying to get the concussion rate down. I think right now, peewees, and I think once you get up to the age of 12, I think, or once you get to, uh, not, not midget, uh, but you get to about bantam, you get to, you, you get to age 12, essentially. You get, once you get towards middle school, yeah, do you actually start checking? And I do think, um, you know, and sometimes it's even up to 14, but but yeah, I think I think 14 is still good. Um, 12, if anything, 12 actually does get you more prepared for uh, high school, and and that would just brace you as well. I think 12 is a good age, but the refs, um, if the refs really pay attention and just be more cautious, I think that's the better solution. So when they do go up to juniors or college, they can, uh, let's see, they can uh, be more prepared for it earlier on. Um, goalies, uh, goalies are actually kind of interesting with this. Um, Jim Craig in the 1980 uh, Olympics uh, sort of got a concussion for a minute and then, and then, you know, the refs give him some time. His teammates are like cheering him on. Come on, you got this. And, and Steve Janizak um, of uh, Minnesota, you know, almost went in too. But, but no, he got through it and then he played for the Boston Bruins and um, that was pretty much it at the end of his career. He didn't even go into the Hall of Fame uh, when, he, when he got there. Uh, you know, at the end of his uh, year, uh, you know, tenure with in the NHL. Uh, so there's just wanted to bring that up. Um, so um, also speaking of safety, um, I'll bring this up. I was playing a beer league game on Friday night and um, and the ice was like not cut right. I, ch- I get the first scoring opportunity and and I fall straight on my on my behind, and um, and that was uh, like just oh, I had it too. Um, I I also was criticized too, um, by one guy, and um, and also when you're on the bench, please keep your helmets on, um, and also don't put your bare hands on the wall or the door of the bench, um, at all where right next to the ice. I mean, you have guys coming on and guys coming off, and if you get and if you get cut by a skate or if the puck hits your hand or your head, that's on you. And if it hits and even if a player is coming on with his stick um and and uh and, he, and it's just facing the wrong way for a second, um and it hits you, that's on you. I am sorry. I am not like I was really mad at one of my teammates for that. And, and I am just now expressing this because, because it's like, you don't get to complain if you're not going to take precautions. That goes for everyone. I don't care if you're um, a fan of this podcast or if you stumbled upon this, you know, know this. I'm not going to take uh, any crap from anyone because if you aren't going to do the bare minimum to protect yourself you know, you know, it's on you. It's on you, too. And it's like, get your hands off off the top part of the wall and the door and so you don't get injured. Don't be stupid. All right? Um, okay. Now, um, now, types of helmets. Some guys do play with visors, um... I still play in a cage um, with a cage helmet. Um, and then there's the hard plastic. Hard plastic's really good for roller 
Um, visor is good for roller, but if you have the visor, like the Sidney Crosby visor, the Reebok style helmet, get a mouth guard, please. If you're doing beer, beer league or roller hockey or whatever, uh, please get a mouth guard and keep it there. They're really cheap. You can get one at Sports Authority. Oh, yeah, that's right. Sports Authority doesn't exist. Uh, you, you can get them at Target um, or or wherever. You can also, you know, also, also you know what? Go to purehockey.com, actually, to get them. Uh, don't, don't go anywhere else. Pure Hockey has them. And there's that. Um, okay, we talk. All right, now. More on equipment, uh, make sure your skates are strapped in well. Um, I prefer tight around the ankle, make, because, I mean, if they're too loose, you know, you're going to go falling a lot, so just uh, keep that noted uh, as well. Uh, shoulder pads, um, you, know, you know, keep your head up, obviously, and, and don't headbutt, keep it up. You know, shoulders square, um, and uh, just keep your knees bent so that way when you do take the hit, you know, it's not, it's not going to be hard. But, yeah, that works um, as well. So, uh, yeah. Um, so there's that. Uh, with, yeah, goalies, um, goalies definitely have the most pads, so... They're, they'll always be protected, honestly, at some point. Uh, yeah. I think I, I do kind of wish at one point I, I made the transition to be a goalie. Uh, I do think that would have been uh, interesting. Uh, and, and, I mean, it's not easier at all. Um, and you're not necessarily more safe. If anything, uh, you know, you have... 100 mile an hour pucks flying at you. So yeah, it's going to be difficult to do. Um, I do like, I, I mean, like I even tried to be a goalie at one point and then I had a knee injury and that wasn't too well. Uh, which brings me to my next topic, uh, practice. Don't do anything foolish at practice, ladies and gentlemen. Please be responsible and don't like get your knee caught in the, or like a skate caught in the corner just to, because you're funny. Um, also, definitely try, like, stay low and and uh, just, you know, make sure your body um, is strong, uh, your legs are strong if you have to go to the corner and hit and, and take a hit there. You know, it's good. It's, it'll work, believe me. Um, there's that, uh, we've got, um, so much else, um, I'm, I'm thinking right now, so, so take it easy, um, uh, okay, so there, so do not slide into any other player, if you're, if you're new to the game, don't, you don't get to slide and check someone, you don't get to do that, that is a penalty, that's interference, um, it could even be cross-checking depending on how you're holding the stick. So don't do that. Um, no slashing, no tripping. Um, those are all penalties. And, and, and it's not just all about the entire safety of it because a simple trip and, and the player's wearing uh, all the pads and all the gear, is, it's not going to hurt him or her. He'll, um, the player, that player will, uh, be safe, but also the reason why we give a penalty is because it's unfair to, you know, the, the opposing team. So there's that. Now fighting in hockey is, in professional hockey is allowed. Um, in college, they'll try and break it up immediately. You may get away with it if you're really lucky, but for those entering college club, do not do this, and don't do that if you're especially on the Golden Gophers or any or any high quality NCAA team that is not club. Uh, so keep that noted. Um, 
there's that. Uh, the, yeah, um, so club fees, there's, you still need to uh, make sure you have your uh, waivers, uh, even if you're not in the NCAA. Um, so definitely check that out from your doctors as well. So please consult your doctors when you get the chance if you need an updated physical. So please do so. Uh, there is that um, as well. So physicals, everything. Um, in practice, um, don't overexert yourself um, uh, as well. Um, I mean, I'm saying play hard, but I mean, you know, don't, you know, you shouldn't be training, you know, hard every day. There's a reason why we still have off days and, and we don't always go for the morning skate the day, the day of the game or, the, or even the day before the game, you know, you know, we need our legs to rest, Clearly, we do need them to rest, and they are the most important muscle. The, the most important muscles we have as hockey players. So there's that. Um, ice anything as soon as you can. Uh, there's that. Um, get an icy hot patch from CVS if you ha- if you don't have the time. I think that's also a great way to recover and do some yoga as well. Yoga certainly helped. Um, and like, I always do yoga the day before, the day of the game. That way I'm like limber and loose and I'm ready to go. Um, and, uh, and I do skate better when, when I do yoga. And I'm not, and that was um, just something else when, you know, when, you know, that, that time, the on Friday night when I went down, but but you know, you know that's why we wear pads. Um, yeah. So uh, with the NHL season coming up, uh, we have. Uh, I hope the players don't take any risks. Um, fighting is kept to a minimum, and uh, yeah, that's all I can really say. Uh, fighting in the NHL, I think. I think it has become a bit barbaric in in some circumstances. And then, you know, they get a bunch of majors. It hurts the team. Sometimes the captain has to go to the box. It's, it, it, it's not what I want to see when I just want to see, you know, skate, shoot, score, um, play defense. And I want to see Tuka Rask make a bunch of saves or Braden Holby or Semyon Varlamov or Jonathan Quick make a bunch of saves. I want to see saves. I, I like. I'm not even concerned about big hits too, and, and you don't need to hit big to be effective too. I mean, I'm in beer league, and we don't even hit at all. We don't check. We don't do any of that. We just force players to the outside, and and just make things you know tough for them. But I definitely think it was um, that it's definitely good to. Uh, see um, everything from a different perspective uh, at all. Now, um, I- I'll tell you this, um, and uh, before I go, goalies have had the most uh, transformation, if anything. You know, one time they didn't, they weren't even more in pads, they just had that weird inverted uh, lo- wider stick uh, no pads, just skates, and they were playing with, with sweaters on to keep themselves warm, uh, which was weird. And then when they got pads, still, there was no face mask even. And, uh, and then Terry Sawchuk and all the others came up as well. So that was uh, interesting when that happened. Um, um, not until really the 80s or the late 70s did you start seeing the traditional goalie mask or, or what could be considered a modern-day goalie mask um, as well. Also, when the butterfly came about, if anything, that actually sort of protected goalies in a way, um, not, just, not just because the pads got wider over time, but... Um, but it certainly um, uh, made it easier to uh, cover the puck and stop it 
and then the ref would blow the whistle and 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 um because it it was harder to find you know it is harder to find for uh for the refs and if they don't see it they they always will blow the whistle so so that did in a way make the player the uh goalie safe and it also made the player safe because uh when a play stops uh the players can collect their breath and they are not and it gives them a chance to change and take some time off or they just reset and then they uh they work on getting the puck out or scoring a goal and 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 they're not and they're less likely to go at top speed because they're already in the zone get my drift okay so this uh will be episode 14 there will be a bonus article out for paid subscribers uh, later in the week. So there is that. Uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, you can subscribe to my Substack. You can go to my YouTube channel. And I will leave all those links in the show notes. Uh, so until the next one, stay safe. Stay great. I'll talk to you all in the next episode.